Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Semper Kai Guy channel. It's been a few months since I started working on the E92 project and I know I haven't posted an update in a very long time. So in this video, I will go over why it took so long, what's happening now and the plan for the future. After taking the engine out of the car and tearing it down to see what it looked like, I found that it was basically not rebuildable at all and I had to find another engine. Unfortunately, that's where I ran into some issues. At the time of buying the car, knowing that it will most likely need an engine, a BMW N55 engine could have been had for $3,000 or so, with less than 100,000 miles, of course not including turbo and some other accessories, which I would gladly pay. However, whether it was due to the pandemic or winter being right around the corner, the engines just disappeared like from the market completely and the pickings were slim. The best engine I could find was well over $4,000 with 135,000 miles out of a wrecked car with no warranty or guarantee. Now I could have risked it and went for it, but it felt like such a step back. My car has only 85,000 miles. I waited and waited and nothing came to the market. Then one day I was on Facebook looking for random car stuff as I normally do and decided to search for a BMW N55. To my surprise, there was one for sale and it was only 5 miles away from me. What was even more surprising was the asking price. They only wanted 350 bucks. I figured for 350 it can't hurt to at least go ahead and take a look at it. After taking a closer look, I realized that it was in a rebuildable condition with a clear case of a spawn bearing. So I pulled the trigger on it and brought another broken knocking BMW N55 engine home. Of course, it's not in a perfect condition by any stretch of the imagination, but it's decent enough to attempt rebuilding. I brought the engine home, put it on the stand and started taking it apart to inspect it closer. So how good of a shape is it really in? Well, let's find out. Even though the guy that sold me the engine swore that the only damage on the engine is the spun rod bearing, I have seen what a spun bearing can do, so I had my doubts. My biggest worry was damage to the cylinder head and the cylinder walls, which would make this engine not really worth rebuilding. I used a small camera to go through the spark plug hole, and what I saw scared me a lot. It looked like it was all cracked and black, and just not like what it's supposed to look. So I looked through the camera into this cylinder, and it definitely looked like there was something missing, so I was really worried. And I was pretty much like, this engine's not rebuildable. But look at that, it looks fine. I mean, at least these uh, middle four cylinders, there's no scoring, there's nothing, it looks perfect. So I'm gonna rotate the engine carefully, since I have, you know, everything kind of hanging in the air. Uh, so this moves down just a little bit, so I wanna make sure this one is in good condition. And if it is, hey, this is ready to be rebuilt. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm gonna have to get a new crank, it's a lot, a lot of work, but hey, if I can rebuild it, that'd be such a cool experience and such a cool learning experience. I also, of course, looked at the cylinder head. So let me put this back a little bit. There is no damage on any valves or anywhere on here. So that's awesome. All of that looks good. So I think this engine is actually salvageable, surprisingly. I mean, when I looked at all of this stuff comparatively to the engine that has 40,000 more miles. I mean, this looks brand new. This looks clean, like it was just installed. And this looks like 150,000 plus miles. So I don't know. We'll see what we're gonna do about that, but I'm excited. I rotated the engine, as you can see, and obviously that still all looks the same. But luckily, this one looks good as well. I run my finger through it. There is no noticeable or visible damage, which is, I mean, as much as you can ask out of a knocking engine. So I think this is a success so far. Let's, let's see how it's gonna go. I didn't include the teardown footage on this engine up until this point. It is pretty much exactly the same as I did on the original engine. So check out those videos for details on how I got to this state of the engine. While I do some research and wait for the parts to start arriving, I'm continuing to take apart the bottom end. To remove the bed plate, I had to first remove the main crankshaft bolt. This turned out to be a lot harder than I thought once the engine's on the stand. Holy crap, it's been like 40 minutes trying to remove this bolt, but... Oh, look at that. 
guys have no idea how good this feels. I ended up using a wrench to hold it in place and a very long pipe to break it loose. Now that the main bolt was out, I was able to remove the crank hub, which then allowed me to remove the sprockets and the chains. A few screws and bolts later, the oil pump was ready to be removed as well. The last step in this assembly was to remove the bed plate bolts in the correct sequence as well as all of the outside aluminum bolts. It's mandatory to replace all aluminum bolts when reassembling the engine, so lots of ordering ahead of me. I then removed the bed plate from the engine block to expose access to the crankshaft. This is why I did so much work disassembling this engine, it's to replace this big old chunk of metal. I won't be releasing those rod bolts until I'm ready to put the new ones in as I'm afraid of accidentally pushing the piston out and it falling on the floor. At this point it's pretty much done with the disassembly of the engine and it's rebuild time. I have ordered most of the parts I will need to get started but first I will have to clean all of the parts I will be reusing and set up a better workspace for myself. The plan after is to replace one of the pistons, put all new main bearings in and replace the crankshaft. Put the bed plate back on, seal it with the correct sealant, install all the gaskets and seals, and reassemble the rest of the bottom end. This of course will be in another video, so don't forget to subscribe to follow this rebuild project. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one.